Hi, my name's Andy. Uh, this is part 7 of uh, my Raspberry Pi game, my first Raspberry Pi game. Uh, we're writing a really, really simple game. Uh, it's the first ever computer program you've written. Uh, you can do it on your Raspberry Pi. You can actually do it on any other computer, and any other Linux computer is going to be pretty similar um, to what we're doing here. Uh, today we're finally going to draw the promised green uh, circle, which I've been talking about for ages. Uh, do check out the blog post you can see behind me. Uh, it's got all the information that I'm going to give you here. Um, and it also has a full version of the code uh, that you can compare with with yours if something goes wrong. So, we're back on the Raspberry Pi. I've got LeafPad open with our file open called redgreen.py. Um, we're going to be changing it today so that by the end of this, instead of just popping up a ready screen, um, which asks for the already and then exits, we're going to pop up a ready screen and then a green circle. And the idea is eventually, when the game's working properly, um, when the green circle comes, you're supposed to press a key quickly. But if a red square comes, you're supposed to not press a key. So, first thing, we're going to make this ready screen wait. Instead of waiting um, until you press a key, we're going to make it wait a certain amount of time. And the amount of time we're going to make it wait, wait is going to be random. So we need to be able to use some random numbers. So we're going to import another module. And this module is called random. So import random. We'll just put that under um, pi, import pi game. I tend to put my imports in alphabetical order just to make my life uh, easier. Um, so what we're doing here is we're saying get hold of this module called random, which is a bit of code someone else wrote for us that we can use. And import it, make it available to us, and give it, um, it's available to us under that name, random. Okay, so, now, we've got a function called wait. So if we look at um, our main, the main structure of our program, which is right at the bottom, uh, what we're planning to do is get everything started, then show a screen saying ready, then wait, then show a shape, and then finish. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make this wait function, which we've defined up here, but which is empty, it just says pass, which means do nothing. We're going to change that to do something useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out how long we want to wait, and then we're going to wait for it. So here we go. Time to wait. So we're defining a variable called time underscore two underscore wait. And we're going to use that random uh, module that I imported at the, at the beginning. And I'm going to call a function inside there called randint. I'm going to pass in two arguments, two pieces of information. And the two arguments I'm going to pass are 1500 and 3000. Notice there's no commas in the numbers here. Um, that would confuse Python because it uses commas for something else. Okay, so what we're saying is, get me a random number. An int is a number, integer. It's a mathematical term. So get me a random number, and I want it between 1500 and and 3,000. 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, indent your next line to be the same indentation level as your previous line because we're carrying on this function. So all we're doing there is making a variable which has a number in it. That number will be somewhere between 1,500 and 3,000. So now we need to tell it to wait. And the way we do that is we use a, a function that's inside pygame. pygame.time.wait And that function just takes in an argument, which is how much time to wait. So we've made a variable called time to wait. Um, and that's how long we want to wait for. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a comment to this line. So a comment is a little bit of writing, which is completely ignored by Python, but which is useful for us when we come back to read this program. Um, you should definitely pay attention to how easy or difficult it is to understand your program. When some, when a human is reading it, it's actually more important than the computer, um, because if if the computer misunderstands it or it doesn't do what the computer doesn't do what you thought it was going to do, it's going to be a human that changes it. So it's very very important that a human um, understands your code. More important, and it should be higher up in your mind than whether a computer can understand it. Okay, so what we're going to say is between 1.5 and 3 seconds. So it turns out these numbers over here are in milliseconds because I consider that slightly confusing. I don't normally think in, in terms of 1500 milliseconds. I've added a comment which is telling any human that reads this that what we're asking for is a random time which is between 1.5 and 3 seconds. Um, the way you make a comment is you type a hash 
and then everything else on the rest of the line is ignored by Python. You can type anything you like there. And I also want to comment uh, here next to this line. Um, I'm going to say note, there's a bug in this. And the bug is that you can't close the window while we're waiting. So we're going to wait for this time, which is going to be between one and a half and three seconds. And you can't close the window. Uh, we're going to fix that bug eventually, but for now we're going to put up with it, but we're going to put a comment there just so that we remember there's a bug in this function. Okay, so that's how we're going to wait. We're going to wait for somewhere between one and a half and three seconds. Notice that this function here um, is inside time. So we've seen before something called pygame.event.wait. In fact, it's down here. What we're doing here is pygame.time.wait. It's a completely different function. Um, pygame.event.wait waits until an event happens. pygame.time.wait um, waits for a certain amount of time. You can't interrupt it. Okay, so now we're going to wait for a random amount of time. The next thing we want to do is this function, shape. We want to draw a shape on the screen after we've finished waiting. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new function first called green shape. So eventually we're going to be able to write, draw a red square or a green circle. So we're going to put our green circle into the separate function called green shape. One, two, three, four. And then inside that function, we're going to actually draw the shape. We're finally going to do it. So let's make a variable called green, which is going to hold on to a, the color green for us. So the way we make a color in Pygame is we say pygame.color. Notice the American spelling. Uh, and then we, we say which color we want. And Pygame knows about the color green. So if we give it this, this thing in quotes saying, um, I want the color whose name is green, Pygame knows about that and goes and gets it for us. Indent by four spaces to carry on this function, and we're going to make a new variable called center, which is going to point at the center of the screen. The way we get the center of the screen is we say screen dot get width, and then we divide it by two. That means we're halfway across the screen. Screen dot get height divided by two. So what we're saying is make a list of numbers, two numbers, one of which is half of the width of the screen one of which is half of the height of the screen. And notice we've got brackets around the outside here. Quite often in Python, we put brackets around lists like this. You don't have to do it, except when you do. In this case, we don't have to do it. Um, but where where you need the, group, the brackets to group things, uh, you need it. So uh, before we've made a few lists by just putting things with commas in between them. Um, that's fine. That's how you make lists in Python. Here we put brackets around them because quite often, um, it makes it easier to see that this is a list. Okay, so we're going to use a new, make another variable called radius. The radius of a circle just means how far it is from the middle to the outside. So we're going to um, get a number which is about the right radius for our circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the width of the screen divided by 3 as um, a reasonable radius to use for our circle. So now we've got some numbers. We've got a color green and, to, and a list of numbers for the center uh, and a number for the radius. Keep, carry on this function so we still type four spaces. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make the screen completely white. So screen dot fill, which means fill the screen with color. Um, Pygame dot color white. So here we're, we're making the color white immediately on this line as part of this. So we're doing two functions here. We're calling the function fill. And then the argument we're passing to fill is a result of calling this constructor, which, which builds this, this, this color. A uh, constructor is a way of making an object. What we're making here is an object of type color. And we're passing in white. So what we're saying is make a white color and immediately, once you've made it, that makes it. Once you've made it, pass it to this function fill. Uh, which says fill the screen with the color white. And then we're going to draw a circle like this. Pi game dot draw dot circle. It's a function called circle inside the draw, which draws a circle. And we're going to say where to draw it. Draw it on the screen. What color to draw it? Draw it green. Where its center is, which is this variable we made above. What its radius is. 
and then we're going to put a zero which you shouldn't worry about for now so we draw a circle one two three four finally what do we do after we've done any drawing we have to say pi game dot display dot flip which says now you've done all that drawing in the background now i want you to display it bring it to the bring it to the front and show me it okay so that is the all the code we need to draw a green circle the last thing we need to do is change the shape function so that it calls it so that is literally just this so when when we ask it to uh when we run the shape function which we saw below we run as part of our main program all it does is cause the green shape function the green shape function draws the green shape so if i've done everything right i'm going to save it i'm going to go to my lx terminal and i'm going to type dot slash red green dot pi and hopefully we should see a ready screen and then a green circle and indeed we do and then the green circle is going to wait there until we press a key or something because now we're in the end function that we wrote before um, and the end function uh, uh, waits until you press a key you click a mouse so let's click a mouse to get rid of it and we finish now let's try one more thing just to demonstrate the bug I talked about earlier we're going to run this again oh I'll show you a little trick so this time I didn't type dot slash red green dot pi on my keyboard I pressed the up arrow and what, when you press the up arrow you get to see all the commands you typed before so I pressed the up arrow I got back the command I typed last time, now I can press return. A bit easier than typing it. Now, let me close the window. Whoops, I missed. Let's try again. Close this window. When it comes up. It won't close. So that's the bug I was talking about. The window doesn't close when the ready screen's there. If I close it now, it does close. So, um... Uh, we'll be fixing that in due course, but not yet. Next time, we're going to find out whether or not you pressed the button, and hopefully even how quickly you pressed it. So, see you then.